back at the compound and say we're going to be trying to diagnose what exactly happened when the Corvette caught on fire. We're going to put it on the lift and see what we can find out. We know obviously it was a fuel fire and we are just trying to figure out where it started and then what other failures might have happened to contribute to everything. I'm interrupting this broadcast because we are having a fire sale right now. Too soon? Yeah, it was, it was too soon. It was too soon. In all seriousness, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's been reaching out, all the comments with love and support, with advice, with criticism. We've learned so much from this incident and I hope sharing what happened and walking you guys through absolutely everything just brings more awareness to fire safety and how to hopefully prevent something like this from happening to anyone else. I've had so many of you guys reaching out about how you can support the build, how you can get involved, and we've come up with this idea where I'm going to actually be cutting up this front fender here, the one that is Super, super toasty. I'm going to be cutting this up into a bunch of pieces and putting together packages that you guys can get on houseofpre.com. The link will be in the description below. Now the package is going to come with not only a piece of the car itself, but we're also gonna include a signed print in there with a thank you note from me, because you guys would be literally helping us rebuild this car. I don't currently have any new merch or anything coming out right now. So this is what we thought of, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to actually give you guys a piece of the car. So we are quite literally having a fire sale. It's, it's too soon, it's too soon. We're going to rebuild this car, come back stronger, and get back to shredding as soon as possible. That is it, and I will let you guys get back to all the updates in this video. So we have the Corvette back in the shop. Smells like a campfire. It's not funny, but just, uh, not funny. just trying to make light of this really pretty incredibly awful situation. Um, this is the first time that Nick and I are gonna be going over it and trying to figure out exactly what happened. We have theories and they yeah. still stem from the fuel rail because yeah. this happened to us on Drift Week where these backed out, you know, with everything rattling so much and being aluminum, it just, it just happens. We've seen the issue, we've, we've addressed tried it. to address the issue, and... But if it's something that happens over time, like, if you looked at the session where this happened, I was on track for a half an hour, like, I was just hot lapping the car and all the vibration could have built up, but watching video back to the fire, it just seemed so much more aggressive to only be that, but maybe the initial cause of the fire could have been the rails getting loose. This one, actually, just this one bolt is loose. Only this one. This on the side, driver's side. Yeah, this side is tight, but the crazy part is this side of the engine bay was, the was definitely the most of the heat. So we haven't... And this... fuel was pouring out somewhere. Yeah. Because this is where, on this side of the car, was the hottest and had all the fuel dumping on the ground yeah. somehow. So we still haven't like, so all the fuel lines and stuff, they all run behind the engine and they actually run on the driver's side underneath through the trans tunnel. So once we lift up the car, we'll see if we see yeah. any sort of issue there. But the problem is we can't decide like when exactly each issue happened. Like yeah. what was the first cause then what was the second cause of like continuing mm -hmm. the fire so aggressively. From the in-car video, if you look in front of where in front of me, the first flame that I could see was right here. Yeah. Through the hood. See, that, that it, makes sense to me yeah. because it seems like this was the first cause, but why everything continued to stay on fire is probably due to just 
how much pressure was coming out of that specific spot and all yeah. the fumes that were built up in the engine bay itself. And one thing you just mentioned was that we are kind of lucky that you put the dry sump tank on the inside of the yeah. car because a lot of people run that tank right here. And as you can see, like this is where the brunt of like the biggest heat spot was. This is where the mm -hmm. biggest flames were. Our lines are melted, but nothing, nothing opened. all the way through. Like yeah. these are all steel braided, luckily on the inside. So all the nylon coating that was on the outside did burn completely gone. Yeah. But the steel on the inside kept them all together. So thank God. Thank God. And luckily yeah. the fire was put out in a, a quick enough time that it didn't, wasn't able to melt all the way through. Because then it could have just been a whole nother level, basically. I've never seen a fire that like disintegrated an entire shroud and well, fans within and, a minute. And that's the thing is, those as soon as those catch on fire, they just keep burning. Yeah. And keep burning and keep burning and keep burning. So like, what? and it, it got so hot that the radiator literally blew out. And it's lucky that the radiator did blow out because that probably yeah. helped put out the fire. Yep. <laughs> literally all that hot water, it least helped put out the fire because they were running out of extinguishers. Like I wasn't yeah. there, but when I got, by the time I got there, they were already gone through like 12 extinguishers or something like that on this thing, so. I don't think we had many more no. by the time the fire was actually put out. And then the big there. bang that we heard was the radiator melt metal like expanding and then just blowing up, but helped us a little bit at least yeah. with the fire. This is crazy. The gauge, like even how hot it got <laughs> over here. Yeah. It's just, just melted. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna try and go through everything, look underneath the car, try and figure out the order and sequence of how stuff happened. Yeah. Still heavy leaning on the theory that it started right here. That's definitely regardless an issue. Like yeah. that bolt shouldn't be out as far as it is. And it's definitely a yeah. leading cause of what happened for sure. Yeah. But what continued the fire may be something else that also caught on fire once everything was already engulfed in flames. Yeah. So. And for the inside, I didn't realize that our seat got a little toasty right there. Yeah. And in the in-car video, we saw the flame and I said this before, I'll say it again, like I just purely got lucky that I didn't catch on fire. Yeah. But our seat got a little bit of it and then our wiring underneath here for the race pack. For the smart wire switch. The, this basically is the major. this is the only wiring underneath the car. So like there's no holes in the firewall or anything. Mm -hmm. There's only these plates that are hiding basically the places that we had to cut for the trans tunnel. And unfortunately there's just slight gaps between all this stuff. Like you can't necessarily, like we didn't weld anything directly to the chassis. So there yeah. are slight gaps between stuff. And that's where this fire came through was just through these slight like eighth inch gaps that are in between these pieces of panels. But also with how it like fully engulfed in there, we're I, thinking it was maybe the slight gaps, which maybe we could put some like gas air or something over it, which would have eventually melted and gone right through anyway. Mm -hmm. But we also think there was standing vapor in there because I did smell 85. I thought it was the car that I was chasing at the time because that car historically has run rich and 85 cars usually just smell more of. So I was smelling more fumes for at least 60 seconds. And the way stuff ignited on the inside, you can kind of tell that there was just vapor sitting the fumes inside the cab. The just fully ignited and it just sent the flame straight underneath the back of the car. Like, yeah. We're gonna see probably quite a bit more burnt stuff underneath and see like how far it went back. Yeah. We don't know exactly yet. As of now, definitely everything's gonna have to come out. Um, uh, the whole, everything, everything in is here. just getting stripped. Everything back to basically a bare shell besides maybe the back half of the car. Yeah. <laughs> we might, we'll be able to leave the rear <laughs> frame and the gas tanks, maybe, but maybe. that's about it. We're gonna have to wait until everything is out to figure out structurally if the engine bay is fine, there's yeah. probably gonna have to be a lot of fiberglass work. Um, sure. We were just talking too, because at the end of the day, it's still, it's fiberglass, you know, it's not a, a metal firewall. So even if it looks fine and we repatch it with fiberglass, we're probably also gonna throw some heat shielding over those areas in case it was weakened and maybe to just help as well at Corvette things. It's you just know? not necessarily like, we're not sure how structural the firewall is compared to like a normal car. Normal chassis, 
you need obviously a strong structural you know firewall but this is all fiberglass so like well, how structural is it in the beginning versus, you know, how it is now? I'm yeah. not sure. We just got to see how damaged it really is. Um, but I think the paint, because of, you know, you did so many layers of clear coat and stuff, helps. Yeah. Like, yep. because it probably just burnt those layers of paint and clear coat before getting to the actual fiberglass material. Yeah. Like, if there's so yeah. much thick material on it before the fiberglass that it might have helped save the fiberglass underneath as well. Yeah. So we're gonna start diving in. all the way back there and then ended the up getting the fuel lines that were on the driver's side. Yeah, but it didn't, I don't think it went all the way through. I think it just did the Teflon coating on the outside of them. Man, this is crazy. Even the motor mounts are melted. The knock sensors are melted. This, this caught on fire at some point. It got all the way to the filter. Yeah, and it lit this up. Damn, it almost caught the gas tank on fire. Wow. This is a vent line between the two tanks that sit on each side. And it's melted? It's completely melted. And then like this little heat shielding for the uh, pipe that sucks from over here to over there. So it definitely could have been a lot worse. Oh, it could have been so bad. The gas tank caught on fire. Like, Oh, like you got the whole thing is this whole area was on look at the exhaust is covered in soot I didn't know it got this far back I didn't either yeah it melted the zip ties off of like the wiring for the O2 sensor it, it melted the sticker off of the drive shaft wow that's crazy because no one was even spraying back here. This no. just, we got lucky and it put itself out. I think that's from it melting. Is it? Maybe. So that, I mean, that could have been, that was right here it where could. the ground was on fire. So maybe it was brake fluid that eventually melted through the line. And then what was still on fire on the ground was just yeah. that fluid. Yeah, it's possible. Like, I just don't understand. It was this part of the car that was yeah. just so freaking hot. How hot would it have to be to go through a brake line? I don't know, honestly. I mean, the whole line is completely melted. Like, this has a coating too, and the whole coating's gone on the whole line. See, this one still has it as well. Well, and, and there's fluid out of it. Mm -hmm. And that one's, yeah, that one's fine. This one's still fine. I mean, it's I, not loose or anything. Like, normally, like, this part gets close to hitting this and it could could have broke it loose. Yeah. But I think this could have eventually melted through and then if you have pedal pressure against it, it'll burst this line and then the line would spray and then catch on the header and then light this whole area up. That at least makes me feel better, like trying to find something over here. Because all yeah. the fuel lines route over there. Yeah. And like trying to find reason out of what was on the ground and like f i think this in the catch can i mean you can see look at the bottom of this catch can it is completely like black oh, oh wow like this whole area is so hot so i mean even that could have caught on fire and then caught this on fire then this could have sprayed out and then got more fire yeah there's so many variables this is this is That's crazy. This is absolutely yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anything like that. Even mm -hmm. like, even when the Mustang like burned down the engine bay of it, that was a fire over 10 to 15 minutes, you know? And it, it eventually looked like this, but we're talking what, a minute and a half total when yeah. all everything happened? 
It was definitely really, it did a lot of damage really quickly. Okay, but Randy hasn't seen the car yet. I didn't even know about it until like 10 minutes ago. And you haven't me. you haven't seen any video. No, so I haven't seen anything. The question for Randy is do you think it's going to buff out? You know, buff I think out? maybe a little light buffing, a little sanding. Well, this right here, the purple yeah. is a little damaged. So Can this, you fix that real quick? this is annoying and unfortunate, but hey, positive note, this is a solid color. Yeah. So, yeah. we can definitely fix that. Yeah. Out. And then as we work our way up to the front of the car, um, oh. <laughs> yep. No way. Mm -hmm. Randy had just finished like double, triple, re-clear coating this car because I just wanted more protection on top of the paint. It looked amazing. Oh shit. And um. It's fine. Yeah. You don't gotta worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Crap. I mean, it, you know, everything's fixable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm trying, to keep a, I'm trying to keep a positive note. Man. You don't gotta lie to us like that. And everything's visible. Oh no. It's literally... No. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, thank God you're okay. Yeah. yeah. So that that's the that is the it's worst. The I mean the hood is really, really bad. Um and then this, I mean this still has to be redone. It's so weird how it just hit this part of the door. Right. Um, like came out under the fender. Like yeah. This way. Okay. Then I mean, really, the whole I guess this door. How's the bay? And everything there. Oh, <laughs> how's, the bay, you how's the bay? He says. Huh? How's how's the bay? Here, pull that <laughs> that's that's the worst. That's Man. toasty this corner. This area is no bueno. Wow. See the fans? <gasps> yeah. Crap. Uh, guys, uh, what are you doing the next month and a half? I'm <laughs> It does not work. It does. Look at it. Power. Ready? Look at it. Holy <laughs> wow. You ready? No. <laughs> you didn't see any leaks? No. Watch, watch. When I watch just the fuel rail, when I press it, it like expands up, right? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, but... So I... Okay, I'll make it, you want me to make it spray? Because if I just move it a little bit, it'll spray. Yeah, okay, turn it on. Careful, it might get there. Really not spraying, huh? I, I mean, I just. Well, it's gotta have some sort of leak. <sighs> Wait, keep it, keep it going. All right. It definitely isn't that side. There's no leaks, really. I mean. Besides that, definitely was leaking. <laughs> what? The, the initial fire from the in-car video started right here. Was here. Yeah. And I smelt fumes pretty heavily. Like I remember specifically touching that when I saw it. I saw this was loose, and I was like, "Okay, that's not right." And I went and I moved this like a certain way, and it sprayed me in the face. Yeah. I remember. It's just not, I don't know, it's not really doing it right now, for whatever reason. What else? There's no, nothing else is over here. Um. I don't want it to leak. <laughs> What's not leaking? <laughs> Be the answer. <laughs> right? Like, I need a definitive answer here. Wait, will you just leave it running and then let's just move? You want me to just move? Oh, I shake the yeah. shit out of it till it leaks? Or just... It ain't bad, eh? Careful, you might have sprayed. <laughs> like I swear, it sprayed me right in the face. No, it makes no sense. The car's like, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> it's like, nah, we're fine, everybody. See, this whole thing expanded too. This whole, you can feel the top is like bowed out. Yeah. 
That's still okay though. Definitely started there, 100%. It had to, that's the only spot. That's the first place you see it too, in car yeah. immediately. I do and think that the brake line and the catch can were another contributing fire, but I don't think those were the start. I think this was the start. Yeah. I mean, there's no other leaks too. Like you look under the car, there's no other leaks. Like I'd been running a lot of laps and yeah. the transmission tunnel near the exhaust, everything was really, really hot. Yeah. You know, the, even like, the pedals were a little hot, like everything was just hot. Yeah. But so if there's a bunch of fumes in the air. The, the ethanol would have to hit the hot exhaust and I think that would cause the spire. I just want to know what it is and that's why this, this is just more annoying. I just wish it went right when you turn it on. It was like, yeah, yeah obviously right there. there there's is. the, there's the thing Doesn't that, that did the things. No fuel lines leaking, absolutely none. Even almost like the one side that had the loose rail, which is what our entire hypothesis is centered around. That one side with the pump going, you can almost like try manually pull it all the way off and it wasn't even spraying out. So we just, we confused. We still trying to figure it out. It has fuel pressure right here at this, like this sensor is still working and it's still showing the correct fuel pressure. This one's obviously, we can't see what it says anymore. But. <laughs> Yep. It's working. It so. works. It's just you can't see it. It's straight up and down. Yeah, it's got fuel pressure. Oh my god. So like we have fuel at the rails, there's fuel here, there's fuel going on, but we can't, like there's no leak. It's not leaking. So in theory. And we didn't move this or tighten this or anything, like it's no, still it's obviously it's still loose. still loose, yeah. There's still like a quarter inch gap yeah. where it was backing out. Oh yeah, it's break. Oh, well, I mean, we know oh, we know there's a leak now. The whole line is leaking. Let's the whole line is melting. So the cl clutch is fine. The clutch is good. Yeah. Oh, good. Clutch pedal is money. Brakes are gone. But was it the first thing? I don't think so. I don't think it was the first thing. That would definitely explain the all of the fire. I feel like that was stagnant on the ground. It was probably from maybe this brake fluid leaking. Yeah. Once it caught on fire, like once it burnt through that line, that's what caused the continuing, well, but see the problem is it's not like there's a lot of brake fluid out there. Like, you know, like there's still brake fluid in the reservoir. Yeah. And like, it does have some pedal pressure to it still. Still concluding that this was the initial cause of the fire. There's just, there's absolutely no oil anywhere. All the oil lines, are just fine. There's not a yeah. leak with it sitting in the trailer. We, no one saw oil during the fire. I smelt fuel right before it happened. And Nick claims, we don't have it on video, but he <laughs> claims that I he went. budged this As and got shot in the face with fuel <laughs> after the fire was already like that put was out. The first thing I went to go look at is I was like, okay, there's a fuel leak somewhere. I went, I saw that this bolt was loose. I pulled up on the fuel rail and moved, like moved the injector and it sprayed me right in the eyes. And I was like, ah, oh, yes, there's the leak. And that was it. And and now the car is just acting like it, nothing ever happened. Nothing fuel ever happened. It's holding. okay. <laughs> We're just gonna conclude that that is the cause. Yes. Both off of observation, you getting shot in the face <laughs> by like moving this with yeah. fuel afterwards and with the in-car video knowing that the fire came through the hood right here before it went anywhere else yeah i think that's i think that's the conclusion yep i think so i think that's that was the determining factor it's kind of annoying that it's literally working you know not perfectly but it's working yeah. exactly how it should be i just want to see it like i just want to <laughs> after going through that it's like yeah. yes shoot me in the face with some fuel <laughs> and like confirm that that was the issue so that we know that's like this is I'm never gonna happen. Because I got shot with yeah, the fuel. Just, at, least, at least you did. Yeah. So we're just, yeah. We're gonna probably end up finding new hardware for this and we're all, also change. using Loctite yes. like from now on. And now the rebuild starts once more. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Right.
the next day. The front subframe is dropped. I've just been like looking at everything and it's pretty depressing. Right now, the game plan is to basically take some of the accessories off, take our dry sump off and pack up the engine, send it over to Texas Speed. The guys over there are gonna just go through everything, probably replace gas tips and just inspect the engine as a whole. Get that back together for us, send it back. Um, there was quite a bit of heat and fire on our transmission as well. You can really see it getting a bit toasty in here. So, oh, I mean, yeah, and even like right up to here, all, all of this. So that means we're gonna have to send this transmission back out to G-Force as well. Just have them probably open it up, take a look at everything, make sure we are good to go. Just cause at this point, this there's so much heat concentrated everywhere that you're worried about integrity, seals. You can see how bad the heat was here. Melted our motor mounts. You're gonna need new BC Racing front suspension as well. Pretty much all the Himes on our FDF angel kit will also need to be replaced. Tie rods, I mean the rack probably needs to be rebuilt as well. As we know, all of the lines, all of the wiring, Just crazy. And brand new radiator and shroud with fans and that thing expanded. This expanded. Uh, we're gonna send out our DC power alternator. Send this one out to DC power. Just have them inspect it, test it, make sure that it is good. A lot of our injectors are actually like melted to their clips. The powder coating held up surprisingly well. I can probably just clean this up. Fiberglass is pretty melted. Mostly on the passenger side, but the driver's side too. So right now, like a, a lot of those main pieces, like this whole fender area, and then that is actually like part of the engine bay because it's all just a giant fiberglass piece. I might end up having to replace those, which means we're gonna have to remove them, which I don't even know how we do that. I think it's like panel bonded on. Remove them and put a whole new piece on in addition to like new front fenders and wide body kit and all that. So if I'm already gonna have to source new ones, I might just get like the Kevlar composite racing ones from HGK if they have them in stock and ready to ship. Yeah, obviously new body kit. Because the fire got all the way to the back of the car, you know, that compromised our lines back here. Probably our filter as well. It's just crazy and like I feel really bad for everyone that has helped, you know, make this build a reality, especially Nick, you know. We're still recovering from like the exhaustion of just getting through this build in the first place. We didn't even have a livery on it yet. We just started feeling like we had sorted the car out. And, you know, it's not like it was a major oversight or major catastrophe or failure. It's just a freak situation that was really, really unfortunate and heartbreaking and could have been a lot worse. You know, if we just, I just have to keep reminding myself that. But it's like we're still recovering from building the car in the first place. And ironically, Nick has actually had a trip planned. Like in two days, Nick is leaving for three to four weeks maybe. So this is just like the worst timing ever. And it's just, yeah, it just sucks for like everyone that has helped turn this car into reality. Most parts on this car are fully custom, so they're gonna have to be completely rebuilt, remade, um, and a lot of our, you know, bigger pieces, like the engine or the transmission or the clutch, like the, the alternator, like so many pieces are gonna have to be sent back out 
and inspected, potentially rebuilt, and then sent back. So I, right now I'm not 100% sure that everything should be done in time for the next clutch shifters, but we're definitely gonna 